uh, it's time to install the battery so let's take all this out as I said my friend uh, had flooded batteries and they failed before she came so she went ahead and disconnected everything I'm going to be removing these things from this battery box and then down here uh, I'm going to re be removing these bumpers so we have more room uh, and then I'll be dry fitting the battery. She brought with her um, this Epoch battery. Um, I think they had some kind of a Black Friday sale for like $900. It's a single 300 amp hour battery. Uh, I think it's uh, seven and a half inches wide, which should fit in the battery box. Um, but we'll see. I've never installed one of these batteries, but uh, uh, I'm, I love first, so we'll get to it. Okay, so I normally I replace this bolt but this epoch, epoch battery uh, is shorter than the lithionics batteries that I normally deal with so I just uh, opted for foam uh, which would also give some insulation um, against from the bottom of the battery box from metal from the coal going through the metal and I've also taped up this vent with a turnabon tape so she wouldn't have a bunch of dirt blowing in. Uh, so now I'm going to dry fit the Ep Epoch battery and we'll see how it fits in there. Okay, so the Epoch battery is pl plenty short. You can see that. So that's fine. Um, it looks like it's just going to fit inside the battery box but your connections are on the end so the positive cable is going to be fine for connection but uh, sadly the negative is way too short so I will make a new negative um, remove it from the ground bolt back there in the corner and uh, then I'll be able to um, have the correct length to make the battery connections. Um, so I'll come back. All right, so I made a new cable that's 24 inches long, which is gonna be fine for reaching the negative terminal. So now I can go ahead and, and get started hooking this up. Uh, we had, she had, uh, she taped off her positive cable here uh, because she removed the battery. She lives in Tennessee. She removed the battery before she came. And uh, this would be hot with alternator charging and solar charging. So I told her to tape it up uh, and then she would be able to drive without issue. Um, uh, tape, having this taped up and out of the way so there wouldn't be any risk of you know it touching metal and sparking or anything so all right and where's those oh here they are all right and these are uh, 13 millimeter so you always hook the positive up first and you want to see how plan out how the battery is going to slide in because you need your cable to move in such a way that allows you to fully seat the battery so it looks like the best way is if it points like this so it can lay against the wall and this this terminal is hot so I am using my insulated uh, 
ratchet. Um, but if you have a metal ratchet, just make sure you don't touch anything metal when you're on this positive terminal or you will short and you don't want to short out the battery. All right, so you want that to be tight. You can't move the cable. That's what the way you want it to be. And then the same with the negative. Now I have to plan for it to how it's going to lay. So I think I'll put it like this. That should be fine. And you always hook the positive up first and the negative last. And if you're disconnecting, you do the opposite. You disconnect the negative first and then the positive last. Okay, so this doesn't move. Oh, uh, this company doesn't give you... That should be okay. I was going to say, oh, they don't give you any sort of terminal covers. Um, but I see the top of the battery box is actually um, wood, not metal. So there's no issues. And this is lower than the lip of the battery box. So that'll be fine. Okay, now I have to get this up. foam pad that I have put down. Alright, so I will I'll wrestle this into place and come back and show you what it looks like. Okay. So you can't really you can't really see well but bottom line I ended up having to point both cables straight down the the parallel with the edge of the battery. Uh, everything fit that 24 inch cable did fine just tuck it up like that uh, that looks good uh, you definitely can't you definitely wouldn't be able to get two of these batteries side by side but I think this is a, a great battery for how she's going to use it she you know she wanted a, an inexpensive battery uh, she wanted a heater she wanted the um, Bluetooth battery monitoring. This battery has it. Um, so it should be uh, plenty of power for what she's for what she wants to do. She does, didn't want to change her 1000 watt inverter so she left that. She didn't want to change her solar. Um, you know she basically just wanted to do an inexpensive battery upgrade and getting this battery on sale for a, a Black Friday uh, after Thanksgiving sale was was a, a great buy for 900 bucks 300 amp hours um, I mean it should perform you know it's it's not a high high out, output high performing battery you know so I, I can't say how long it would run you know any serious loads but for for running a thousand watt inverter um, to allow her to boondock I think I think this is a great battery and it's and you know it's got all the features with it a heater and a Bluetooth battery monitor. It has low temperature, high temperature cutoffs, high voltage, low voltage cutoffs. I mean, it's got all the, you know, um, basic appropriate uh, safety features uh, to protect the battery um, from, you know, the weather or from humans, you know, not using it right, whatever. Um, so I think this I, th I think this is going to work good. So now uh, I'm going to go get some foam and pack the sides of this battery so you know it's going to stay in place. And I'll come back and show you that. Okay, uh, I got the sun on me, so I, uh, I put a nice little wedge. This is just extra foam I have that I save from. Uh, batteries or whatever that comes in the mail so this makes a great block 
and this battery is not going anywhere. I mean, it, it is solidly in here, which is great. Uh, and now we will... Okay, so I took off all the um, bumpers and metal brackets and everything off of this so I can make sure. So this is the moment of truth. Will <laughs> the battery box close? this okay so I had built up the floor because of this bolt but now I'm going to replace that bolt with a taper headed 5 16 by 1 inch taper head bolt so I'll get all that together and come back and show you all right so this is the 5 16 taper headed uh, machine screw basically that I'm going to use and I have a um, 13 millimeter well it's the the matching this is 516 so the matching but I have a 13 millimeter socket that fits it so I'm just going to use that so I'm going to replace that bolt in the battery box and I think I'm using a 15 millimeter sockets for that so uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, we'll come back and show you Okay, so there it is. Uh, now the floor is flat. So um, I will slide this battery back in place. Oh, now you can see how I put the cables basically per parallel to this, to this edge. Um, so the battery cable folds up a little bit easier. You still have to stick your hand in the back and jiggle, particularly the red one. Um, um, you know, because the, the roof of this battery box isn't smooth, so, um, but you can. You just reach around the back and keep wiggling the whole thing until you get it uh, fully seated in the back. So, I'll do that and come back. Oh, one thing I forgot to say is this, the bolt that I removed uh, is part of what holds your step box uh, in place, you know, the step motor, the whole assembly for your steps. And uh, there's only three bolts, and this is the center bolt. And uh, I think it's too important um, from a load-bearing perspective not to replace it. So uh, I replace it with this uh, taper head, taper-headed 5 16 by 1 inch um, machine screw. And uh, then that makes the floor flat and you still have, you're still maintaining the integrity and, and the support of the mounting of your step. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, moment of truth. Sometimes you have to take a step back to take a go forward. All right, the bottom fits. Oh my gosh! It looks like it's going to work. I hate these steps are so hard to, and you have to do them just right. Oh my gosh, fabulous. Okay, we're all back in battery is working um so now it's time oh you want to prove the battery is working okay let's see do we have lights whoa battery is working okay now here's another are you still running all right here's another trick that you should pay attention to I put a magnet on this door switch. So if you have a magnet and you put it on this little switch, you can keep your steps in and your door will shut. Um, so this is a trick. If you ever want to keep your steps uh, full time in, like if you know you're going to parallel park in a, in a city in a tight space or something and you don't want this to come out and hit the curb, 
uh, go ahead and add this before you get in that situation so then you're not going to damage your steps. But I always do this because I don't like to step in my way when I'm working in the battery box. So, but now that we're done with the battery box, shazam! And, and then that'll be something you have. Okay, well that's good timing because the next thing we're going to work on is we're going to install a battery charger. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, taking this off and we're going to be attaching the battery charger to um, straight to the battery connections here and there should be an, a plug, an outlet in here. So we're going to connect all that and put her battery charger basically behind her battery box and then she will have um, a correct lithium battery charger when she's on shore power. So we'll get, we'll, I'll get the stuff together and we'll do that. All right, so uh, first we're gonna remove the front panel. Make sure your um, coach battery switch is off. That kills all the power to this. Um, to this breaker box, well, to the fuse panel, um, and not being connected to shore power takes away the power. Kills, make sure you don't have any power here, because this is shore power and this is battery power. Okay, so like I said, this is an outlet. So when we take this drawer out and go to the other side, you'll see that this is a plug, basically. And uh, it is, Leisure does not connect it. So I will have to, where's my... I don't have my cutters. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we are going to remove this 15 amp fuse, which is the microwave, and we're going to replace it with a double so I can connect this outlet to its own circuit breaker. So let me get uh, the things, my tools together, and we'll do that. All right, so um, here's the back of the outlet. As I said, I um, these, this is stranded wire, so I got another piece, this is number 12, I got num another piece of number 12 stranded and crimped them together. And then I've hooked it into this, I changed out the single 15 for dual, so I could put the microwave on one side and the outlet on its own circuit breaker. So those are connected right there and this breaker is back in place. I turned off the 30 amp and I've got both these off until I'm ready to turn everything back on. And um, I, uh, we are installing a 7 amp Victron smart battery charger. So I've already, it's going to go on the other side of this wall. So I've already got, um, I already have have it, uh, you know, laying in there, and I haven't plugged it in yet, but I want to make the connections, so I cut off the terminals, um, I cut off the ring terminals that come with this, and I'm going to put on... some ferrule connectors to make that a nice solid connection because we're going to be putting the negative here and the positive there so I hate working with the strands they um you know sometimes they're hard to get in the hole and then you don't get the surface area connection when you tighten them down so I just like to use barrels for a good, good solid crimp. Um, 
and then you're not worrying about stranded wire. So as I said, we're going to put the uh, we're going to put the we're going to put the ground over here. over here push that back a little bit from behind get this lined up properly Check that those are tight, they are. Okay. Okay, so, um, all right, so we have this all connected now. Oh, I'm gonna go on the other side and uh, hook up the, um, you know, secure the Victron battery charger and we'll come back. All right, so here is the Victron battery charger. We just, uh, this is just a seven amp, um, you know, so it's just a simple uh, top up the battery charger, you know, get the battery to 100%. Um, we're going to look at disconnecting the Magnum battery charger, but even if we can't, you know, at least she's got a good battery charger that's going to uh, top up the batteries. Um, anyway, so I just have it laid in there between between the door rail and the um, uh, breaker box, which is right there. And I've got it plugged into that outlet on the breaker box. I just zip tied it to existing cables. Um, so, uh, and then I pushed the I loosened that connector and pushed the red wires through and you saw me connect them on the other side to the positive and negative battery terminals on the fuse panel. So we're done with the battery charger. The next thing we have to do is, uh, this is Bluetooth, so we will set up, uh, we'll download the Victron Connect app and set up both her battery sense. Victron battery sense that we installed with the Kisei to monitor the chassis battery and then we'll um, start this up and put it on lithium and we'll show you how to do that. All right so to recap uh, the Victron 7 amp inverter is uh, just on the opposite side of this wall. We plugged it into this outlet which is powered by its own 15 amp breaker. This is the microwave breaker. Uh, I moved it to here, to this dual. This is a tandem. So I moved the microwave breaker, put the microwave breaker on its own 15 there. And this outlet has its own 15 amp circuit breaker uh, here. And that's the red wire for the hot feed. The neutral's on the neutral bar and the ground is on the bare wire ground bar in the back. Um, then I pushed the battery cable connectors for the from the uh, battery charger through a terminal straight back there brought them forward put these ferrule connectors on and hooked them into the negative and the positive battery connection terminals of the fuse panel so now we can go ahead and button this back up and you can order those Victron uh, battery chargers in any uh, up to 25 amps. So you can order any size you want. Um, I just uh, ordered the 7 amp, trying to keep the cost down. Okay, so I got the panel back on. I marked that this breaker is now the battery charger and this breaker is now the microwave. Um, 
it's all screwed back in. And then we just clip that back in and whoops, got it upside down. Clip this back in its spot and bam, we're done with that. Okay, so we got a nice battery charger for the new battery. So bottom line, if the Magnum battery charger uh, runs, it will charge the lithium battery up to about 85%. And then this little Victron uh, battery charger that has a, um, it's Bluetooth and it has a lithium battery profile, it will then bring the battery up to 100%. So when you're doing these upgrades in these older leisure travel vans that have the isolator solenoid and have the Magnum inverter, you need at least one good lithium battery charger. So you can either install, you know, a Victron like I did, you know, here connected through the battery uh, breaker box, or you can change out your GoPower solar controller to a, a really good Victron um, MPPT uh, smart solar controller. And that has a lithium profile, that's Bluetooth, so you'd be able to monitor it. You'd have lith good, really good, high quality lithium battery charging. So you need to have one of those two things um, for a good full-time, you know, uh, house, you know, for a house battery lithium profile. Um, and then we've also replaced the uh, isolator solenoid with a DC to DC charger. Um, and uh, the chassis battery maintainer, the chassis battery voltage reader. So you'll, you can look at my video and see how to do that or see what we did to replace the isolator solenoid. Okay, that's it. Okay, um, she downloaded her Victron Connect app. Now we're gonna go to... Okay, so let's start up the uh, Victron battery charger. You have to be plugged into shore power. Um, six zeros. You saw that, that I was going to do the other. Okay. Oh, good. Well, I, I think we'll be surprised. Okay. So this is, it's, it's actually, um, uh, oh, change the pin code. Okay. All ones. Okay. All right. So it's actually charging seven amps. There you go. Okay. So we go to settings. We want to put it on lithium and charger. Um, I think that's it. Oh, I want to hit my three dots. Product. Edit. All right. Put Luan battery charger. Now, do you need to put house battery? No, no, okay. because the no, other one no. has the okay. name, so okay. that's fine. Okay. I just wanted to just say okay. Yeah. It, yeah, it just trunks it. It truncates okay. it. Okay, there's your there's your battery charger. Um, oh, this doesn't have um, the extra data. Okay, so that's all there is to setting that up. And so there you go. You got battery chart. You got lithium battery charging going. Uh, you can call this up anytime if you want to look at it. Oh, you know, the other thing we haven't done is uh, we got to do your Epoch battery. Oh. We got to download that. Okay. From the App Store? Yeah. Okay. Just the title. Okay, so we are downloading the Epoch Lithium Ion Battery app so she can connect um, to her new battery and see what its battery monitor looks like. All right, it looks like it's searching for your battery. Please enter. Is that it? Try mm -hmm. it, yeah. It's only, is that it? It's only 38, it came only 38% charged? Yeah, I guess that is. I wonder if you can change, oh. Edit. Oh, hmm. oh that, that's it. 13.4. 
Yeah, you yeah. you only have well the, the battery's being charged. Um, yeah, this came to you. Not charged. Yeah, well, barely little, charged. Yeah, well, so that's fine when you get to the campground. I there must be a way that you can change the. Oh, there we go. Oh, uh, yeah, you change the so Lu Luann's house battery or house battery, whatever. Yeah, Luann house battery. Success. Well, maybe. Oh, there we go. Oh. Is that, is this it? So it, that didn't take it? Okay. That's so weird. You said okay. Yeah, I did. Well, I can't type or see. It said success. It's what's that mean, demo mode? Oh, I don't. Yeah, you might want to read the manual. Okay. And yep. see what you can figure okay. out. But that that is it. So it was shipped, you know, thirty eight percent, which is way low. I mean, wow. I really don't think it's an issue. Okay. I mean, if it was on zero or some, you know, really like one percent or something, then that would be. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. So there we go. Awesome.